Okay, I have pressed record. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm Mariana. I'm the curator at Open Eye Gallery, and today I have Catherine Monaghan and Emma Case, and we'll be talking about the Club More project. Um, so before we talk about the project itself, it would be great if you could do some introductions and just kind of tell us a bit more about yourself. Um, and also maybe talk a little bit about your thoughts on socially engaged photography and how that kind of helps to shape your practice a little bit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you want to go? Yeah, go on, you go. We're going to be ultra polite to each other now, aren't we? <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Emma Case. Um, I started in theatre and education, so complete different industry, um, and worked with sort of schools and PRU units um, with theatre, with drama, um, and then started learning sign language and worked for a deaf theatre company called Definitely Theatre and toured with them around the UK. That wasn't really um, sort of engaged theatre, that was just plays in, in, in theatres. Um, and then became a wedding photographer for 10 years <laughs> um, and shot weddings along with my husband. Um, but at the same time, was kind of really missing that engagement. Um, and so I well, was living in Birmingham at the time and I found Multi-Story, which is an arts organization based in the black country. Um, and they do really incredible projects with um, photographers, local and further afield. And I began working for them on a few different projects as, as sort of like project assistant and that with, the, with photographers like Michelle Sank and John Tonks um, and Susie Parr and then started doing my own projects with Multi Story and did a podcast last year called Samwell Stories which were actually picking up again um, in a different format um, as part of their Stories in Isolation project at the moment um, and I think Multi Story was when I really kind of was absorbed by the, the socially engaged practice before I don't think it was really something that I'd, I'd done um, through photography. And so multi-story sort of showed me quite a few different ways of working with communities um, and also sharing the work. So they're really, really great at taking the work back to the community. They had Blast Festival last year, which actually they showed the work in an indoor market, in Poundland, in, um, on the streets. You know, I think it's just, um, it really sort of opened my eyes to what's possible. And then I saw the uh, position for Artist in Residence, which opened my and um, decided to go for it. I, f I feel like I haven't got too much experience. I just feel like I've got experience with people. My cat's going to go in. <laughs> I can hear you, Kat. <laughs> I can hear him. Um, and I, yeah, I think I have a lot of experience with people and every single job that I've had, whether it's support work um, with deaf adults, um, whether it's theatre and education, whether it's shooting a wedding, everything seems to have sort of brought me to this place. And I feel, I feel this is where I'm supposed to be. And this project in particular, I know Liz has spoken, Liz Vavor has spoken very much about matching the perfect kind of person to the project. And I feel like both me and Kat, I, don't, I think you feel the same, is that we feel it's a really good fit. Yeah, it feels good. feels right. I think you're right. That is like a people, this job is about people rather than like having loads of photography experience and like technical, um, you know, all the Learn, like having a degree in photography or whatever so yeah, I had a similar thing where I <laughs> I did um I just did a normal degree at Liverpool Uni and I saw there was an opportunity to do a placement module and I had an interest in photography I've always really liked it so I knew about Open Eye Gallery and I thought this is a great um this would be amazing if I could do a placement with them so um I got in touch with them and we managed to arrange a placement I did uh, for about nine months, I think it was. It was only meant to be like, I think, uh, like 50 hour placement, but it became like a much bigger thing, which was amazing for me because this is, I, I realized that it was so much more than just that module and 
doing the report that I needed to do it was it became like the main part of my whole uni um, degree because um, I this is how I got exposed to socially engaged photography I had no idea also like Emma really what that was um, and I sort of learned when I was doing this placement how I had this idea of doing a project with refugees and asylum seekers um, and it was all through doing this project I just I learned so much about how um, the relationship between participant and photographer and how you couldn't just decide what the project was going to be it depended on obviously the people in your group um, so I had a really really good time doing that project I made some really good friends um, I learned a lot and so I did this project had a little sort of event at open eye and I was like this is something I could really enjoy doing like long term and then I think it was like a year later or maybe a few months later that I saw the job for uh, the, the club more group and I thought this was kind of very similar to what I had done and I, I was a bit wary because I didn't have like it, it was also advertised as like a photography class so it was like teaching photography and um, so I was a bit like is that going to be okay for me with my experience but um, in the end me and Emma both managed to um, do the class together which was really great to have that um, sort of support and not the whole responsibility of running this class and it's just been really amazing bringing that um sort of yeah the people and community aspect of things and um really connecting with the group and it's really nice to sort of see them learning new things about about socially engaged photography as well and how there's so much more to photography than just taking a photo and it's about the relationship and co-authorship and um how you can say so much and there is no sort of one truth in a photograph so we've had a lot of really nice discussions about all the kind of conceptual side of photography as well rather than just the techniques which the group are a bit scared of when it comes to the techniques some of the people in the group not everyone and you were saying that you hadn't worked together before this project so is there, yeah. can you tell us like how do your individual practices come together and how do they support and kind of intersect each other? I think we work pretty well together, I think. <laughs> yeah. I um, yeah, and I don't I don't necessarily think we had much time beforehand to get to know each other and yeah, it was just the first session that we met, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, and also <laughs> in the group, we have a two hour session and we are always like packed in terms of like content and the, and the group chat chatting <laughs> we are mm -hmm. a group um and so there's never ever enough time but we do have a, a short car journey on the way home <laughs> mm -hmm. that we can sort of catch up um, and we live around the corner from each other so actually it's been a really nice i've only been in liverpool since october and was mm -hmm. doing um I, I was commuting from birmingham back and forward mm -hmm. every week and so um it's actually been really nice to have Kat, who obviously has been here for a while. <clears throat> the support, I don't, I don't think, even though we had a really small group at the start, I don't think it would have been as easy with, mm -hmm. say, just me. Um, just because you want everybody to be listened to and mm. to, to be able to spend time with each person sort of individually, not just on yeah. a group level. And so for us, it's been a, it's been a real indulgence I guess to be able to have both of us and to sort of bounce off each other and to yeah, sort of catch definitely. up and, and steer the group and make sure yeah that everyone is sort of looked after I guess. I suppose as well like also offering maybe like we have very similar um, perspectives on things and with photography but also having that slightly like two different perspectives as well so it's not just the one teacher with their, their vision you know it's kind of maybe nice for them to have different like sometimes we might have different uh, opinions on something so it's good I suppose for them to see that they, you know there's no one way with photography um, and also I think what's really nice like you have so much like experience in in photography like with your wedding photography which I didn't really have but I had actually quite I had done a project that was very similar in terms of the socially engaged like um, community aspect so I, I think that helped me um, knowing sort of about the relationship and how it was like not just about the product that we're producing but also the process 
um and just like i feel that group i mean the the project i did wasn't actually a group it was working individually with six different people so that was a new experience for me um and definitely having emma made that much more comfortable um sort of you know addressing a group and um we definitely got this good dynamic because it was a small group it very quickly fell into a um it, it just felt like we were all friends really which was really like nice yeah it's really nice i think that's one of the main things i've taken um from this group is and, and other people have said this in the group themselves like we're all very different we all come from very different sort of backgrounds and different ages as well um initially the group was sort of aimed at like an older audience um and it, so there's, there's a and now we have quite a, a range in people from I don't know like 40 upwards and then me <laughs> um, and yeah so it's been it's, it's been really interesting to see all these different lifestyles and learning different things about each other but realizing that we can all still really connect and learn from each other and that was kind of what informed our exhibition exposed because we realized how sharing things about each other and taking the time to know somebody um really is what makes a community because you just you can you can then find so much um not necessarily in common but you can you can connect with each other and and really like value each other and that's what's been really nice with the group is just i've got so much from them and and learned so much about their lives and how and that inspires me as well how i can like things that I can do in my life and how and how there's all these different walks of life and and we are all together in this one group with a, a passion for photography. <laughs> and do you think there's something specific about photography that lets you work in that like collaborative way? So you talked about like co-authorship and working with so many people who are coming from really different backgrounds or really different approaches and do you think there's something about photography that lets you kind of bridge all of these gaps? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every everyone I think pretty much um, has access to a camera in some way now, um, and everybody, even in their sort of family dynamics, will have been taking photos throughout their whole lives, really. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> I mean, for me personally, I was possibly slightly nervous um, to be working with an age group that maybe technology um, might be something that they don't tend to use day in, day out. Um, and so I think we've learned along the way in terms of what maybe we're used to and just do on a daily basis without thinking. Um, yeah. There's lots of people out there that don't know that or don't have that as part of their life. <clears throat> and actually that's been, that's been interesting for us as well as them. Um, and to sort of break things down where you take things so for granted yeah, and then you have to break them down to the point where you're like, actually, yeah, this is a real process that we're going through. And so photography has been, I would say, exciting for our group, for yeah, them yeah. and us, because it's this common thread, but we all have different ways to use it. We all have different ways to experience it and view it and enjoy it. and all of a sudden we're coming together and using that tool to talk to each other, to connect to each other, to learn, to share, you know, it's, and thinking back to sort of maybe my theater, I would find that probably a lot more difficult or, you know, and, and also in terms of technology, you know, we can share that work instantly yeah. out there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's, it's been an easy medium to instantly get involved. And I know the technical side sometimes can be, can be quite daunting, but I mean, the project started with Expose. We gave everybody disposable cameras. And so, you know, my four-year-old, we give him a disposable camera to use. So in terms of usability, they're so versatile because you literally give it to somebody, they have it in their hands, and all of a sudden they're creating this work that shows you an insight into their life. It shows you their kind of, natural style even though if they don't know that yet um mm. it, and and the kind of textures and the and the colors and everything are, are from a aesthetic point of view wonderful to share and so the disposable cameras really 
tested them, but also excited them. Also getting the film back was something that was, you know, something that they hadn't done for maybe years. Um, and so that, that was probably the best way for us to, to sort of start the project with everybody. Yeah, I think with photography compared to other mediums is like what you were saying, Emma, it's like you don't necessarily need to have a skill in it for it to be worthwhile. So you can just take a photo. Anyone can just mm -hmm. can take a photo and you then have this direct insight into their lives. And, and that's one of the things, especially at the moment during lockdown, um, everyone's really valuing the fact that we can have this insight into each other's lives so yeah. even though we're all behind doors we share on Facebook our images and you get a little insight into their into their life and like um, one of the things that I think some of the members have really enjoyed about the photography I think initially they thought oh I'm not I don't know if I'm not very good with photography it's not something I've ever done or I know about I don't have a camera but they've learned with our group we've realized that there's so much more to the photography than the technical side and we can uh discuss with sometimes we just have our photo photography books and we just discuss all these images and how it tells a story and they can just like with the disposable cameras they just took pictures of their surroundings and some of the photos were really technically really nice as well but it was also just the stories that were being told and i think that's something that they learned that photography could be be could be this this way of connecting and actually i think that's really inspired like someone like june um she has become so uh, passionate about photography and i think that's what did it for her it was the it was the fact that she could share and connect with people and learn things rather than the the really technical gritty stuff about things so that's, and she's that's still good. learning loads isn't she like yeah yeah it, it's a really nice way of learning because it's sort of seeping in, you know, yeah. like, and, and when we sort of do maybe a, a kind of review or a, you know, how did you find that session or, and you know, they come out with these answers and you're like, wow, it is really seeping in yeah. and their vocabulary is changing, their way of viewing things mm -hmm. is changing, they're watching films and sort of understanding light and perspective and, mm -hmm. and you know, you suddenly realise that it's kind of a different world they're viewing now it's like through yeah. the photographer lens um yeah. it's That's been really, really cool. inspiring for us to watch that and it's it's mm. actually been affected my own photography you know if we do a session about light or framing then you know i take my iphone out with with you know, yeah you know, my little boy and i feel like i'm starting to do it too so it's just mm. giving it's that fire in your belly yeah. and being conscious as well like yeah before take photographs uh, if I it was more like okay now I'm going to take photographs and it'd be on holiday or something and I was I was in photography mode but now it's like this awareness all the time um of like how can oh, how does this relate to what we were talking about in the group and how can how can people in the group um like is it this is a really good example of that and and you're just becoming more like switched on and I think for me yeah it's making me more um I'm practicing more and I'm sort of just yeah more aware of like the techniques that I sort of took for granted um, because you have to explain them as well or because you're discussing them you start to see things differently which yeah, is you yeah. know what some of the people in the group have said yeah. Yeah. it's a good time to talk a bit more about the project itself and I know that Emma you've got like um, a slideshow as well as some of yeah the let's mm -hmm. see let's see how it goes <laughs> shall we <laughs> uh, let's have a look okay yeah so with our group um we started it in may or june last year so 2019 and it was actually a pilot group um so we were due to finish at christmas and so we had around six months um with quite a small group really there was around five or six um and the group hadn't been formed <laughs> Um, one of the, the community members, Lindsay, had gone to my club mall, which is a community centre in her area, um, which she's kind of a member of. They do like writing, reading courses, they do line dancing. I mean, li literally anything that you want to get up to, you want to go down to my club mall. <laughs> um, and so Lindsay was a really active member in the community and she was really interested in photography. So she kind of asked them 
if maybe she could or they could together start a photography group and so my club more approached open eye and they sort of came together on the project um and then me and Kat obviously um were brought in and and so at the very beginning we open eye gave us um a sort of kind of quite a broad i don't know what the word is um it, it wasn't too sort of stringent it, the end liz vivora said we could produce something and um, so we could we had a small budget for an, an exhibition if we wanted to a sort of work in progress exhibition um, and it was going to be at the community centre, so it's going to be at my club more. And so we began meeting with the group and at the very beginning, it was kind of more about getting to know each other. And I think for most photographers, we're all really used to knowing exactly what we're walking into. So we like to be prepared with our equipment. We like to know what we're shooting. You know, as a wedding photographer, I would, I would sort of scout the venue beforehand. You kind of want to know what you're walking into. Whereas this, there's only so much you can prepare when you're working with a group in a sort of socially engaged way. You want them to bring stuff to the table. You want them to steer it. You want to be able to hold a space that they can flourish in and take you on that journey. You want to know their story. And so you have to be prepared to let go <laughs> and just let them sort of bring it. Um, and they really did. We had some incredible sessions at the very beginning. Um, we did photo walks around the community. We did um, excursions to the city centre with our cameras. We learned about the exposure triangle, which was <laughs> interesting for all of us, to be honest. Um, we did kind of craft sessions like painting over photographs because one of our participants, Bob, is a really incredible painter and he wanted to bring his skills to the table. Um, we used to bring a ton of photography books and all sit there with sort of tea and cake and just talk about photography, talk about what images inspired us and stood out to us. You know, their vocabulary was developing, um, their eye was developing, we did still life, we did portraiture, um, and we also did probably our favourite session, which was, um, uh, what was it called? Share. Show, and, show and tell. Show and tell, that was it. it was so good, I forgot the name. <laughs> and we just, we, we spent the session, they could bring an item or a photograph and then we gave each participant a really nice space to be able to just talk and tell us about that, that story. And it, it kind of changed everything from there, I think. The sort of trust and connection and friendship and intimacy i guess that started from that session i mean one of them lindsay told us this incredible story that she went to go for a job as a barmaid and ended up coming out auditioning for a band and we were like oh that's an amazing story and then she said oh yeah i got the job i ended up a singer in liverpool in like the, all the the dance halls for two years and then went traveling around europe singing and you're just like you're still a black what's going on <laughs> And she was like, oh, I haven't got any, anything to say. Everyone's got great <laughs> stories. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to share with you. And then came out with this story that was really amazing. And it was really nice because it wasn't really about photography. And so it was just nice to just get to know each other as people. Um, and, and I think that's one of the things that maybe nowadays we don't do so much. We don't, we don't have the time to give each other the time to listen and to be present and to to really hear somebody's story and so it felt it felt kind of like an indulgence in a way but I think yeah. they enjoyed it so much and we heard every week for about five weeks on you know oh that session was brilliant I really enjoyed that mm. and and so that was a real turning point I think um, and for a, a group of strangers as well like it was a really good way to like an icebreaker I suppose and yeah, yeah. also I suppose some people in the group um you know were new to the area or or didn't or, or were quite maybe not vulnerable but you know wanted to yeah and so it was really important to build that trust and that relationship as a group um rather than as individuals and um they are so dedicated to each other and to us and the commitment and support is just so amazing um yeah that's probably the one of the best parts of the group i'd say
and so when when we we kind of didn't really know like what the exhibition was going to be you have to kind of let it evolve naturally in a way which is also really scary because you suddenly are in August September and you're like mm. oh how you know we've only got two hours a week with the, with this group you know how are we going to bring everything they're learning together and, and produce something um but very early on one of the participants June just kind of said to me on the way out oh there is so much to uncover about each other and I was like June yes that's <laughs> it like it just felt a really sort it summed up everything that our group was about because I think uh, when we did our, our original brainstorm, I think naturally you tend to go down the route of, well, what are the issues in your yeah. area? You know, what do you want to tell the outside world about? Is there something that you're really passionate about that you want to change? You know, and actually it was all about that um, that bridge, you know, in the in the ducky, and yeah. there's this bridge that is no longer there, and they were all really passionate so upset about that. that. But it just it felt like there wasn't. There wasn't necessarily that connection that um, there was something that was kind of at the forefront. And so actually what we were finding that was the common thread was that we were all getting to know each other. And that was really important. And as a community in Clubmore, the fact that my Clubmore, the community centre was there, that was something that was uncovering things about each other and connecting. And so that then became the theme. Um, and oh, let's see and then that's when the disposable cameras came in we were really interested in just hearing more about their life seeing more about their life um and also seeing their style like as i said earlier i think everyone has like a natural photography style in them mm -hmm. um how they see the world and you know through practice and through maybe looking at photography books talking with your peers you know it's all actually really there. You know, we talk about rule of thirds, we talk about light and we talk about composition, but actually, it, to me, it feels like it's, it's there already. We just have to sort of... Nurture. Nurture, yeah. yeah. And so these are some of the images that the group um, took from their disposables. And that now that we know them all so well, you can really, like, we instantly are like, that's definitely a Bob picture. That's definitely a Lindsay picture. You know, yeah. it's really nice to, to sort of know them in that way. Um, and we were just blown away, you mm. know, blown away with what they were coming with. We did a really nice session after the exhibition where the group were able to go and choose a favorite photo that was on the wall, whether it was one of their own or someone else's. And we talked about the photography. We talked about the image, what it represented, what it meant to each individual person and the the discussion was brilliant like the, the and I think it's good for is. people's confidence as well like that is something that we all struggle with and to to just have a group space where people are really like supportive of your work I think is really good for everyone in the group um, yeah also seeing it yeah. big on a wall mm. you know I think we underestimate how much that can actually power that can have you know that your work is on a wall you know and as photographers curators everything we still feel it um and it was really nice to experience it through their eyes to see their work particularly this image the one of Lindsay's, her side table in her lounge she she took that as kind of like a test she wanted the stuff in it because it's all her family um you know in the photo frames and then this photo i'll be able to show you in a little bit it's actually on the very front window of the whole community centre and it's massive. And I said to her, I was like, oh, this photo is on the window. It's going to be, and she thought, oh, it's going to probably be about that big. And she walked <laughs> around and just saw it huge. And she just was like, oh. and so she took a photo of it. She showed her daughter in Australia. You know, it's really, it's really just wonderful mm -hmm. to see. Um, oh, and this uh, was... A sort of extra session we ended up doing we had lots of photographs um, from the disposable cameras um, but we wanted to maybe look at the layers in terms of uncovering people mm. um, and when we actually came up with the word exposed through <laughs> Lindsay just 
saying it while she was getting something out of her handbag. You know, we said, well, what, what can we call this exhibition? And Lindsay just went, oh, I don't know, exposed, because it's like cameras exposed and we're exposing ourselves. And we were like, Lindsay, that's amazing. <laughs> And so we gave them that sort of word and, and gave them the portrait of themselves and just said, we want you to be able to tell us more about who you are. And they came up with these and I really love them. I think they're really personal to each person. I think we got June's back first, the lady with the big smile, which says hula hooper. Um, and when you know the group, they're just so telling of each person and their, and their personality and also giving us some information about how they feel exposing themselves. You know, I think that's something that as photographers working in this industry, we're actually quite used to exposing ourselves. You know, we are our own subject a lot of the time. So we're used to being vulnerable. We're used to putting ourselves out there. But actually, lots of people aren't used to it. And it's not something that's an everyday thing. And so I think the biggest thing that I've learned is that not everybody wants their own photo on a wall. Not everybody wants their face shown. Not everybody wants their name shown. Not everyone wants to share their work. And I think I've had to really learn that. Um, mm. So the fact that they have means a huge amount. And you might not see that as an outsider, but for us, that's... Mm that's such an important part of the trust. I suppose it's also sharing the fact that they maybe don't want to share everything that like they're all like, you know, there's a certain vulnerability to everyone, um, but that's okay as well. And that's something that you can share, even if you're not sharing all the details. Like one of the participants, Dave, um, he really wanted to do a, a big door that was going to be locked. And that would be his, his sort of metaphor for like, I, don't want closed, not closed off but I don't want to share all these things but it's still saying something about exposure and about um people being able to connect with each other but also having their own sort of like barriers as well mm. yeah and so this was the exhibition this is the the hub um my club more in top left if you can see Lindsay's photo is like on the main window um and it just it just fills you with pride when the group are proud, you know, it just, it's just like a joyous feeling that you have, like putting this stuff together. Um, and so we shared the disposable photos. We shared the portraits with their, with their kind of feelings of being exposed. Um, one of the participants had a few photos that she'd taken on her DSLR and she wanted to add a caption and actually they were, really vulnerable captions and I know both of us felt very proud of her to be able to put that on the wall um, and the feedback was really wonderful we had sort of a launch night um, and just seeing everybody in the space and seeing this space be transformed into an exhibition you know we had to paint the walls <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, you know a few weeks before you know putting it all together it it felt right and it felt like a real journey together. And I think now we feel like a complete little family. Like you do, you get to know it, you get to know them so well. And it goes beyond this, it 100% goes beyond this. Like Lindsay um, spent a bit of time in hospital. So, you know, you want to go and visit her. You, you want to see how she is, you know, uh, especially through lockdown, we're keeping in contact with everybody through a Facebook group, but also we're delivering food to a couple of the participants. You know, you, you, ha you have to care, you, you want to care. You, they mean a lot to you. Um, and I suppose that's yeah. the thing with like socially engaged photography is like in other forms of photography, you just have the photographer and then maybe the subject or maybe participants, but there's this relationship of just sort of almost power I suppose where it's like the photographer just looks at them and does what they want and they're not really involved in the process of telling their own story and then that's it it just ends but I think that's that's the really amazing thing about socially engaged photography and what open eye are really trying to um uh, persevere with is that photography is so much more than or it can be so much more than just 
just taking a photograph and um, pointing a lens at someone. It's like building a relationship and using photography to actually have social change or um, make people's lives better or like <clears throat> with the group it's also for some of them I think it's just like a chance to get out of the house and to have um, some nice conversations with people that they wouldn't be having conversations with otherwise so it's like it's it's yeah it's important for us that it isn't just about the photography like it is about the people and how we can all help each other to make each other better I suppose and it's like, in particular, June, I mean, June comes out with the best quotes normally <laughs> anyway, but she, I think when I saw this piece of sort of art that she'd created and she actually wrote at the top, I took a risk by joining this course, scary. This has opened up a creative side, which has been dormant for far too long. And for me, like I get goosebumps reading that because that's such a huge thing for somebody, you know, it, that's a huge impact on somebody's life um and you know her attitude towards the group she actually came to line dancing and got persuaded to stay so she wasn't even due to to be in the group um and you know being able to form friendships and you know and to increase skills and i've just been blown away by the whole experience and we've learned so much and they're just a gorgeous group um, why don't you have some quotes from some of the members of the project so maybe yeah. like um yeah let's read through some of those if you have those yeah do you want me to just read them yeah yeah let's go through those um okay so june um said we went for an outdoor walk um one of the early sessions through the local park she said i was doubting myself thought i didn't have the right equipment although Emma assured me that an iPad was absolutely fine and it was also a camera. Anyway, really pleased to say that it didn't hamper me in any way. And I've since discovered that I love my new world of really seeing and appreciating things. I've now progressed to a cool pix com compact for portability. I spot something worthy of a photograph in every location situation, whether it be indoor, outdoor, seascape, landscape, I'm inspired. This is now a very changed world and click more photography group has reached out and is much more to me than photography. It's a sense of community, support and friendship. Everyone posts useful comments and words of encouragement. We learn and progress together, each with our own individual style. Thank you, Emma Cat and Pals at Chipmore Photography. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's um, really nice. And she has the biggest smile ever. If you meet June, you cannot not <laughs> smile. <laughs> Kat, do you want to read the next one? Can you yeah, see it? so this is from Deb. Um, and she said, I love our project. I love. I look forward to Wednesdays. I have experienced several traumatic events in the last few years. Our project has been such a welcome distraction from all of that, but it is so much more too. I've always enjoyed photography and done an adult education course, but I learn more easily from an informal, supportive style. So this suits me perfectly. And the pitch that the coordinators have set and one that has been taken up and followed by participants is one of encouragement and support. Even when you think your photo is not a particularly good one, they find a positive, which encourages me to keep going. Thank you so very much for this project. That's really great. Yeah, it's really nice to hear how... Oh, go on. No, 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 I'm just saying, it's nice to know, um, you know, sometimes you don't, you, you don't know how people receive things. So it's always really nice to hear that they're happy about um, how the group is going, I suppose. And particularly now that we've changed from sort of in-person groups to online, you know, we, we do Zoom calls every week with probably about 60% of the group, because um, some of them aren't on social media. Um, and I think I've got a photo here of them on a Zoom. It took a few weeks to get <laughs> us all, and I'll go through, um, all clued up on Zoom, us included. Um, but this is our sort of Wednesday session from three till five. Um, and just being able to come together in this way as well has been really important um, because there's a couple of members that live on their own, mm. you know, in terms of isolation. Um, mm. And then we've continued the sort of project online. And this is the sort of work they're producing. Um, and I think looking at these images, I don't know about you, Kat, but they, I can see the progression so much, you know, particularly for an example, Paul, who's in the middle, 
um, with that black and white photo of his face. Paul is kind of a, a very much a documentary photographer. He likes taking pictures around Liverpool city centre. He goes to sort of football matches and takes photos. But we gave the sort of theme of feelings one week and he set up a tripod and, and sort of wanted to share how he is feeling. Um, and so it's, it's a concept that he's never really tried before. Um, and so for me, that was amazing. He really sort of went out the box and, and, and did something out of his comfort zone as well. Um, mm, I think that's kind of what um, one of the benefits of lockdown is that it has provided this new creative um, inspiration because you're sort of limited by what you can go out and take photos of. So you have to be more inventive. And that's why we're getting some really good material coming out um like these ones on on here like everyone's having to be a little bit more like thinking out of the box um and i think it's good for them to have you know something some sort of like focus um like something to do <laughs> as well during lockdown and um yeah i've been really really impressed with all these photos and so that kind of leads me to my last question which is like what would you say to anyone who's interested in getting involved in a project like this as a participant or as a as as a facilitator I think it's both or is either um huh. I'd I say kind of you have to it. have like an open mind mm. and be prepared to have that that deep emotional investment it's not if you if you want to do something um that's as like socially engaged and um as big as this then I think you should yeah be be willing to sort of dedicate yourself I think it's all about um a commitment to each other and um getting to getting to know other people and you know also people that might be different to you um like yeah <laughs> i think as well just being able to let go i think particularly mm. you know i think socially engaged photography is always a balance between sort of the actual process and then what you end up with producing and that gets put on the, the wall. Um, and I think as photographers, we are very much used to thinking about that end product and where it is going to go and what it is going to look like. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, taking a lot of pride and, and really being invested in that side of things. But also if you, if you are going to work in socially engaged photography, I think, you know, you really do have to invest in that process and, mm -hmm and let go quite yeah. a lot um it, you know sometimes you'll let go a lot and sometimes you'll be able to sort of bring your your aesthetic maybe to the table you know i think it's a it's definitely a a give and take um yeah. and i know I, I don't want to use the word ego um but ego is 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 something that is part of all of us we're all artists we're all creatives um it, you know it, it is something that is in us and so sometimes you have to be able to let go of that um mm. and really be there and I guess for me it's quite like it, it's quite similar to parenting <laughs> um in a way that you want to nurture um and you want to keep them safe but you also want to give your group the freedom um mm. and you don't want to put your necessarily your opinions over i'm talking about my little boy now like i don't want to put my opinions <laughs> on him too much i want him to have his own sort of mind and i guess it, it feels like quite a similar relationship um yeah you yeah. have to be aware that things will always evolve and you can't you can try and prepare but you can't have a plan that is too fixed because it will it just completely depends on the situation the people and like when I did my first socially engaged project that was something I really learned I tried to just pr plan everything and control it and then it just completely changed but then that actually became part of the beauty of it, it was that it was it was um sort of natural and it evolved and I think so yeah you can't you can't try to go in with like a set idea of what's going to happen you have to be willing to um accept that things might change but that's also a really good thing also the trust in sort of the process there's there's certain points that now that we're learning that you are suddenly kind of in free fall and you're like i don't know what we're gonna do 
I don't know what content we've got. I don't know what the <laughs> exhibition is going to be about. And it's mm. sort of X months away, but you have to just keep going and trust that it will start falling into place. That's what we're telling ourselves right now. <laughs> I think that is a fantastic place to end things. And I guess we just need to wait and see what comes next. Yeah. Um, so thank you for your time and thank you for meeting with me online. Thank you. Thank and welcome you. to yeah. Open Eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and looking forward to seeing everything in person and in the gallery yeah. space. Yeah. So, thank yes, you so uh, much. Aww, thank, you thank you, my love. Stay safe, everybody. Yeah. Stay safe.